Hey all, how are you? I'm here to uh, show you my uh, Shapoko 2 upgrades that I've been making since uh, since February or so. Um, I decided that I would uh, upgrade the Shapoko to a Tiny G. You can see right up here in my cabinet, I've got it wired up here. Um, and uh, start using a uh, web-based G-code sender software called Chili Pepper. And I run everything on a Mac, so I can't use anything like Mach 3 or any of those other products, and um, which is fine actually because uh, Chili Pepper gives me a lot of functionality and shows me all the things that uh, I need to do. So I'm actually quite happy with it, and I'm running with a Mac. So again, let's get back to the tour here. So starting the cabinet here, this is my uh, control center, my 48-volt uh, power supply for the DC spindle here. That's a great addition, I highly recommend that. Nice and quiet, powerful, do anything you need it to do. This is the power supply for the uh, for the Tiny G. Over here is my emergency stop, gotta have one of those. Uh, I've got a little power switch for my spindle just in case I want to um, you know, turn the spindle off but keep everything else powered. Uh, this is from Inventables, this is their, uh, their speed control and of course they, uh, they provide you with a little uh, dial. Um, I'm not using this right now because it's actually plugged into the Tiny G and the Tiny G can control the speed of the, uh, of the spindle, which is really slick. Although I always use it at full speed so I don't even really need that, but I don't know. As I experiment I'm sure I'll do other uh, really cool stuff. These are my wire connections to the stepper motors. These are my sensor wire connections for my limit sensors. Um, very important, I use shielded wire, uh, which I think makes a huge difference. I used to use mechanical sensors and they would trip all the time. And now I'm thinking that uh, with this, uh, I don't have that problem. Plus my Hall sensor, uh, Hall effect sen limit sensors are, uh, are really great. They don't seem to have any problems either. All right, so let's start from the back real quick. We'll go through this. Hopefully I can keep this short enough so I don't, uh, I don't bore you. So back here I made myself a, um, a, a connection for all my cables. Right now just my limit sensors are connected. My uh, stepper motors are all hardwired so I have to put those into the plugs at some point. Until I do that I can't take the Shapoko off the counter. So um, not a big deal. Um, I've uh, installed a drag chain here on the side. I got some ideas from uh, the Inventable site on some of their uses with the uh, drag chains. I also put one up here which is really nice. I'm actually glad I did this. I used to use that split cable management stuff and it worked, but it was a little bit problematic. Made myself a little mount here for the drag chain. If you guys want to do something like this, uh, let me know. I'll send you the STL for that drag chain. I printed it on my 3D printer. I also made an L bracket here and I have an L bracket over here for this drag chain. And there's nothing, there's nothing complex about the L brackets. It's just all measured and designed to fit on the dynamics of the uh, of the Shapoko end rails, so if you want to take advantage of that. And then of course the biggest update that I made was the uh, limit sensors. Um, I uh, built a limit sensor with the uh, Hall effect sensor and I did this based on a uh, on a design I found on uh, on YouTube. Um, theirs was with SMD, a little bit different than mine but um, um, same, same idea. I might try making SMD later on, I'm not sure I can study enough for all of that, but basically Right here is the, uh, is the hall sensor right there. I'm going to see if I can get you a close-up without it being too blurry. And then, of course, on the gantry is a magnet that will trip it. And I, uh, the magnet obviously sticks because this, uh, this is iron, but I put a little bit of hot glue because I don't want it moving around. It'll uh, mess up the adjustments. And, of course, it'll turn red when it gets tripped. Um, and as I promised, I, uh, I would show you how this works. So we're going to go ahead and home the machine. It's going to home... Uh, Z first and then it's going to do X and Y and we'll show you how that all works. So over here is Chili Pepper and what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to tell it. I'm going to click on the, uh, see if you can see that right here, I'm going to click right on the home button and it's going to take off. So here we go. So right now as you can see it's homing the Z axis, the motor's coming up and the sensor's green and as soon as the magnet gets close enough it's going to trip red and then it's doing the back off. There you go. There's the back off. And now we're going to come over here to the x-axis and do the same thing. Same deal. And then again on the y-axis. Again, same deal. Alright. 
And I also have Max sensors for the, uh, for the uh, Y Max and obviously for the X Max. And this is to prevent crashing in either direction. I've never really had crashing problems, although I have my share of crashes. Now I don't have to worry about it at all. And then the final one will be the, uh, the probing. When the bit touches the copper, I have it connected here through a cable back to my uh, cables back there. And I'm going to show you how that works. You'll get to see that in a second. So what I'm going to do now <clears throat> is I'm going to switch to an offset. I'm going to switch to my... Uh, my uh, G58 offset. It's just a place I have pre-programmed so that I can show you how this works. And I'm going to tell the the, uh, the uh, Shapoko to go there now. And here we are. It's moving to that location. Uh, nothing fancy, just moving, moving to a specific location. There you go. Now, at this point, I am ready to probe for uh, the board, the copper, because now I'm getting ready to etch and I need to know that bit is touching that copper. So I want to know that point. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to come back over to Chili Pepper and I'm going to click the test probe. And this is just to make sure that it can find that board and it knows everything's right there. So when I click on this, it's going to start moving down to the, um, it's going to start moving down to the, um, to the board very slowly. So here we go. on to do something I uh, didn't zero it out I always forget to do that all right so let's try it one more time here we go so now it's coming down it's gonna get a little closer you can probably see it it's really slow as soon as it touches there you go it stopped so that's the uh, that's the copper board so what I would do at this point is I would zero everything out and now in theory, I could just start etching my circuit. However, Chili Pepper offers one additional feature that um, is priceless. And basically what it will do is it will probe the entire board and find all of the inflections in your board, whether they're too high or too low, and it will modify your G-code accordingly. This is huge. Now I'm not going to do this because it takes forever to run it on this big of a board. It'll be here 10 minutes or so. I don't have enough time for that. But if you want to see an example of that or something, there is a demo out there by, uh, by uh, somebody else, so you can check it out. But this is a great feature. Last thing I'll share with you on this is, I know some people have noted, geez, not everybody runs this on a Mac. Well, I run it on a Mac, and my Tiny G is actually wired to a Mac Mini. If you look at this, it goes all the way up into the ceiling <laughs> and then into my office. And um, that is connected via USB to a Mac Mini which is running the JSON serial server. And then from here on Chili Pepper, I connect to that one over my, uh, over my home network. And I can actually have a wireless connection to my uh, Shapoko router and I can do anything I want to do. Um, it's great. So one last time, we'll do one more homing just for the fun of it. There you go. Just so you can see it one more time. And um, if you like this video and you're uh, really impressed with it, um, like it on YouTube if you don't mind. If you have any questions or there's anything you want to see in specific or want to understand how I got something done if I didn't explain it well, by all means, send me, uh, send me an email and I'll be more than happy to, uh, to give you any answers I can. And if any of you want the STL files for these, uh, for these mounts that I made, uh, let me know and I'll send them to you. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching and um, let me know what I can do to help you out. See ya. Bye.